Here's a step-by-step -step roadmap on how to become a cloud AI engineer. Cloud engineers are in high demand, especially nowadays that you can leverage so many cloud services to build scalable software. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a complete step-by-step -step roadmap to become a cloud engineer that specializes in AI. First off, what is a cloud engineer? The simple definition is that with cloud engineering, you use various technologies to deliver cloud solutions. Cloud engineers work with cloud service providers like Azure, AWS, and GCP in order to design, build, and maintain cloud infrastructure that is both scalable and secure. And if you want to specialize in AI, you're gonna to need to use AI-specific cloud services in order to build AI-powered solutions. What steps can you take in order to become a cloud AI engineer? First, you need a solid foundation in cloud computing concepts, in network, and in security. And when it comes to cloud providers, you have to start with one. Don't overcomplicate it because they all have similar offerings. And once you learn one properly, you're gonna be able to do the switch to another one when necessary. I personally started with GCP many years ago, but in the last two years, I've been mostly using Azure. And from how I see things are going, I feel that Azure is just going to continue to gain market share compared to the other two, especially when it comes to AA services. Another foundational skill that you need is programming. Cloud engineering doesn't need some low level coding skills because you can just use scripting languages in order to do pretty much everything that you need. So Python is gonna go a very long way, especially that is the main language for AI development. You're covering two bases with it. You're covering both cloud engineering and AI engineering. The third foundational skill that you're gonna need is machine learning. And I say a skill, but it's actually a cluster of skills. Because to understand machine learning and deep learning, you're gonna need to have a good math and a good statistics foundation. And none of these are easy to learn. That's why it's a lot faster to become a cloud engineer than a cloud AI engineer. The dependencies that you need for the AI part can make this journey six months to a year longer. But as you build your skills, then you can tackle more specialized areas as you learn more. Next, if we're still looking at AI, you need to be familiar with supervised and unsupervised learning. You need to be familiar with data pre-processing, feature engineering, model evaluation, and model optimization. Also, you should have a good understanding of linear algebra, calculus, statistics, and probability. These are essential for understanding and applying machine learning algorithms. You also need to get your hands dirty with DevOps and MLOps. And this combines development with operations from both the code, data, and machine learning learning perspective. For DevOps, you're going to need to master continuous integration, infrastructure as code, and monitoring tools. And for MLOps, you're going to need to learn how to put machine learning models and large language models into production. And there's a whole process here. You're going to need to look into everything from data ingestion and data pre-processing to packaging machine learning models and serving them to downstream tools. And of course, monitoring them. And both of these are actually jobs in themselves. So I'm not saying to become a specialist, but you're gonna need to understand all of these processes. And I don't wanna scare you too much because if you're gonna use AI services that are offered by these cloud providers, then you won't get into all of the details on how to build them from scratch. So it's at least a step less than if you would want to be a proper machine learning engineer you're mostly gonna be configuring settings and using APIs and JSON configs to create these specifications. As you're gonna be directly using APIs in order to interact with all these pre-trained models, then you're gonna to need to be comfortable with APIs. This is gonna give you the ability to start working on your own projects where you can leverage services from all of these cloud service providers. And I personally think hands-on experience is the best way to learn. So what I recommend is to sign up for a free tier with a cloud provider of your choice and just start experimenting. Each cloud provider has its own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to machine learning workloads and the services that they provide. And this brings me to the most important aspect and that's learning. Because you can enroll in online courses, you can enroll in workshops and in certifications that cover cloud computing and machine learning topics. And to be fair, this is an ongoing thing for all of us because these cloud platforms just constantly add new capabilities and they just keep doing this pretty much all the time. And I think leveraging this has become the standard. So as long as you keep learning about the tooling that AWS, Azure, and GCP are bringing to the table, then you're always going to stay relevant. For example, Microsoft Learn is a great resource because you can go through the official documentation, you can go through assessments, you have tips and tricks, and hands-on labs. Also, you can go through use cases and case studies, and you have accelerators, and all of this for free. And I think case studies and accelerators are the best because they really help you get a better understanding on how to put things together into a working solution. One of the best ways to learn in today's fast-paced environment is to have self-paced training available because all of these platforms offer these. They offer multiple learning paths and a lot of challenges that you can take. Microsoft made so many courses available for free on the Microsoft Learn website. Now, while these are free to take, there's still a catch because in order to learn, you're still gonna need to deploy some resources and compute. So while you get a couple of hundreds of dollars in free credits at the beginning, you're most likely gonna be spending some money while you're actually learning. The more people that they get to learn and adopt their platform, the more money they make. And this is a win for them. And that's why they can offer so many learning paths for free. 
Keep that in mind because what you're doing, you're actually renting out cloud services. They're not yours, you're just renting them out and you're paying money while you're actually learning. As I'm mostly using Azure nowadays, I would definitely encourage you to first try the Azure Data Fundamentals and Azure AA Fundamentals learning paths. These are pretty basic and will give you the confidence to go for the associate level tracks. For this you're going to need to put in a little bit more effort in order to get certified. And getting certified, this is actually something that many employers care about nowadays. And there's a push from companies to get their workforce certified in AWS, in Azure and in GCP. And they usually get some discounts from these platforms so you can check out with your employer and see if they have a partnership in place. Because I think getting certified is still relevant, because otherwise how are you going to trust that somebody actually knows what they're doing? It's increasingly hard nowadays to just trust people on what they're saying, because now everybody's an AI and a cloud expert. Spending some money to learn and take those exams has become the norm in order to prove your knowledge. And having said this, if you're already on your cloud engineering path, you can check out getthatbadge.com, a learning platform that helps you prepare for cloud certification exams. It's currently in beta and we offer both practice exams and AI assistance to help you learn faster. Check it out as I'd love your feedback. And if you're looking for a way to support the channel, this is a way. You can support Decision Forest and you can also support yourself in learning a new skill. The next thing that you need to do is apply for jobs. This is the final step in order to become a cloud AI engineer. Because this is the only way to know exactly what companies need. And even then, it's going to be hard sometimes to actually understand what they're looking for. But you can use these interviews to try and figure out what you need to focus on. Or maybe you're going to even get more confused, right? Because many of them actually expect you to know everything. So the best thing is actually to start looking for machine learning friendly companies. At least these ones have a better chance of asking the right questions. But this might be actually harder than you think because all companies nowadays are AI companies. But the reality in many of them actually shows that their data is a mess their governance is lacking and you're probably going to struggle as a beginner. But still the chances are higher that you're going to find a better match. Try to apply for jobs that match your qualifications and your interests. And I know that this might be contrary to what Reddit is telling you, to just apply at volume and just hope that something sticks. But if you apply based on your qualifications, you're more likely to get a better match and you're going to get more confident along the way. Because I can't really understand how some can apply for 1000 roles in a month. Like when you apply for so many roles, many of them are not going to be a match and they're not going to be a proper fit. So why would you even apply for those? Because the point here is that you need to show that you can use machine learning and cloud services in order to create value for the company. That's what matters in the end. And I know it's a hard market nowadays because we get all of these periods of groupthink. Everybody kind of thinks the same and everybody just wants to get into cloud engineering and AI. But luckily for you, I think if you put in the effort, you can definitely set yourself apart. And when I think about effort, this includes soft skills such as communication skills, critical thinking and analytical thinking skills. These are the real differentiators for the workforce of the future. Because the majority of the world is actually going in the direction of simple rule following. So you can stand out by being a proper engineer and by thinking analytically and creatively. So don't just learn step by step instructions from documentation. Learn to extrapolate from that and try to build your own solutions. AI solutions that are scalable, secure and reliable. That's what companies are looking for.